Welcome to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. Thomas Miller back here to continue the theme from the previous episode, number 302. I thought we would take just a few minutes to talk about this separating timeline. What in the world are we talking about? And I'll tell you, I almost feel unworthy of having this conversation with you because I'm not up to speed on exactly the minutia and the details of what's going on as people get up on social media and various other platforms and describe it. And here's some background or context on that point. As you know, I was raised in the church, and the Bible was the very authority of life. And a number of places in the Old Testament, and particularly in the book of Revelation in the New Testament, there are a number of prophecies about end times. And I know every one of them, like the back of my hand, because my mom spent her life trying to unlock that puzzle. When is the rapture going to happen? Who's going to be the Antichrist? When is the temple going to be built? And see, in all deference to her, this is somebody who was in her 20s, who was actually about 20 years old, when the nation of Israel was formed and approved and chartered by the United Nations in 1947-1948. None of biblical history could have happened with the Jews scattered all over the world as they had been since 70 AD. They had to come back, and that began in 1947. So for her, these are the last days. Well, there's a whole script that is put together by people who have studied this for a living, Bible prophecy. The one that really gets me right now, especially as we're talking about all this cryptocurrency and digital passports and all of this, is in the Bible. You've heard 666. Well, what is that? It's from the book of Revelation. And in the world at that time, the stage is set for a universal currency. And it says that if you don't get the mark, which a lot of people today believe to be some kind of a chip, the Bible says you will not be able to buy or sell anything. You won't be able to exist in the culture. Well, when I was growing up and really became aware of this and started studying it myself in the 1970s, we couldn't figure that one out. But you sure could today. You go, oh, yeah, they're still doing it right now. Modern technology, health chips, identification chips, medical chips, and currency have all been implanted already. Now, then you get into the metaphysical realm, and there's a whole narrative about what I wanted to talk more about today is this, this separation of timelines. As I mentioned in the previous episode, this is very much the stuff of parallel universes of self, where Fred Dodson in 2006 authored a book way ahead of its time talking about could in an infinite reality there be multiple timelines? Back then, that was pretty revolutionary and pretty bizarre. Then comes the movie The Matrix. And then today we're like, oh, of course we're separating timelines. It's like, you know, I get, on, I get there on TikTok and I look at these young people who get it. They understand. They realize it. They know we've been lied to and they know that we're pulling away from all of that. And they're already aligning, many of them what camp they want to be in. And you could imagine, they want the higher ground. They're like, we've got our whole lives in front of us. We don't want to be deceived anymore. We don't want to be a slave to this corrupt system. Well, that's what sets the battle right there. I'm going to put it in astrological terminology because in 2024, basically, the planet Pluto leaves Capricorn, where it is now, and moves into Aquarius. Capricorn very much rules old, worn-out, tired structures. Aquarius very much rules new, innovative, technological, revolutionary, independent structures. The old Aquarian mantra, don't tell me what to do. But the shadow side of that is the authoritarianism, the control, using technology, and Pluto is coming to the party, having just left the stodgiest old structure sludge that it could drag across the county line into Aquarius. And there's the battle. Already shaping up, we're seeing across the world protests. Why? 
authoritarian government, and politics. Corruption, basically. People see it, and they've had enough. See, the timelines are separating. So Fred advocates in parallel universes of self. In infinity, you can have multiple realities coexisting at the same time. So if that's true, then there is a reality in the world that we move into where you don't travel probably away from your home. Your money is digital. There's a central authority that controls that money, and it can easily be turned on and turned off to give you access to it in a particular geographic area or not. Sound crazy? China is already doing it. And further, you would need credentials to move here and there. You travel, lodging, purchasing, taking up partners. I mean, it all could be controlled. And there could be that timeline where basically it permeates the whole world. There is no place to hide. There also could be a timeline of peace and bliss. Basically, what the book of Revelation talks about is the millennium, a thousand years of no influence from evil. The lion will lay down with the lamb. There is peace on earth. The planet is restored. These things that are destroying all of the various things on our planet are gone. The consciousness of the planet will not tolerate it. They are gone. There are no armies because there's no war. Humanity lives together in peace. That's depicted. That is part of the prophecies of the Bible. Of course, that's what follows the Battle of Armageddon. So, I mean, it is, uh, there's war before peace in that timeline. But it is projected. So, we could have the authoritarian timeline. We could have the warring timeline. We could have the peace and serenity timeline. And I think what we are seeing and experiencing, and this should really make you excited, is that humanity is starting to divide between those two things. One thing I see that could be a bit of a problem is that maybe the conditioning and the programming has brought humanity so low that it's going to take a little bit for it to embrace the significance of The lion laying down with the lamb. Peace on earth. No need for armies. We can't comprehend that right now. But we need to. We need to see it in our minds. We need a group of people who can see that, at least in our mental reality, so that we can eventually see it in our physical reality. So that's why I was saying in the last podcast, with the little example of being diagnosed with a terminal disease, that if you thought, wonderful, beautiful, loving thoughts all the time, you could heal the disease. Well, isn't that really where we are in our world now? Because if we don't heal this, that's basically what we have. What we got going on right now ain't fun. I mean, not even for the oligarchs and the ruling elite. Most of them, their lives are screwed up. Either they've been arrested or they're on the run from something. So I guess I've learned through my life enough to say... I don't think that there is an absolute authority on exactly what's going to happen. So anybody who says this or that about anything in the future, I'm framing up for myself as a possibility. You say, well, what about the Bible? I mean, is that not an authority? Well, my personal take is that a lot of it is not how it originally came through. But I do think that it's very possible that some of those authors were given a glimpse into some things that were possible on certain future timelines. Maybe they were written down in the context of the consciousness of the day. But one thing I have seen and one thing I do know from even personal experience is that you can change a low reality to a high reality. You just have to do the work. And the same is true collectively. So from here, we could either spiral down Or we could what if up? We could spiral up. That's why I think now more than ever, this healing convergence that we are doing, and I'm looking at ways of what we can do to carefully and slowly expand it. The original group, you guys are going, no, 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 we don't. We won't. We won't. I promise. We won't. That's sacred. But it needs to be passed around. The world has to wake up to this. The world has to realize, as what happened in the last podcast, think about it. If you collectively, a group, 
sends love into the ethers of the universe, Facebook hears music bells. Tanya's son hears jingling. Pam, another listener, coming to visit Western North Carolina in October. She's going to get to experience it in person. Says she heard classical music, thought we were playing it on the recording. If all of that can happen, that is so much more powerful than any weapon that the dark side has available. And that message needs to get out. Why would we not scream that off of the housetops? What if the whole world truly could grasp that reality? That if you stand together, guys, it's not an individual effort. The whole key to this is together. And you don't have to be perfect. We just come together with an intention. We reduce ourselves. We put the intention out. And Zuck's servers hear (laughs) angelic music. So what's the answer to the timeline split? I shouldn't have to say. All we need to do is find more and more and more people to join that level of consciousness, however they choose to find it. And just like the analogy in the last podcast, it can't be an on and off switch or else you lose it. It has to be there all the time. Always growing, always expanding, more people becoming aware. And then, one day, out there somewhere, holding that vision, 24-7, 365, the lion will one day lay down with the lamb. So my encouragement to you, as you see it in everyday life, you see it on the freeway, you see it on social media, you see it on television and the movies, you hear it in music, be aware of the timeline split. There is a low level and a high level. In fact, I go back to a verse in the Bible where it says, Broad is the way to destruction. Narrow is the path to eternal life. Many are on the broad road. Many are heading down the lower timeline. And sadly, they don't even realize it. Few now are on the higher timeline. Our challenge? Get more on the narrow path. Let's make it look like Mount Everest in May, trying to summit. A sea of bodies that <laughs> can be seen from space, right? You know, Mount Everest now, it's such an easy deal relatively to get to the top that so many people are doing it. Well, let's make the path to the mountain top that we're talking about look like that. And that's the final point. It does seem like this is going to be the most amazing time to be on the planet. I didn't say the easiest. I said the most amazing, the most exciting. I'm believing this more and more, that what is in front of us is a complete overhaul of the way that humanity relates to planet Earth and to each other. And you know, what may be part of the purpose of this stuff that we've been through these last couple of years is to butter up this planet to say, oh my gosh, I'm ready. Let's bring it. I'm ready for anything different than this. And it's crazy that all you have to do is get on Facebook or on YouTube on Sunday night and sit for an hour and share in some great conversation and send love up into the planet. That's all it takes. And we could change the world. Thanks for listening. Wow. This is going to be amazing. Let's all together support each other and enjoy the journey. I'm Thomas Miller. Thanks so much for your time.